Hi everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I've got a pretty clean and simple Valentine's Day card that features a little bit of painting, a little bit of die cutting, and a little bit of dry embossing. All very doable techniques and featuring some fun products designed by me, yours truly, Kathy Zilski. Thank you. Let's take a look at the supplies. The die is called Big Ampersand, and it is big, and it is an ampersand, and I'm going to take it out and show you in comparison to my average-sized human hand so you can see how big it is. Nice and big. I think this would be fun for a home decor project or a scrapbook page as well. It's just, it's big. It's a big ampersand. Aptly named. I'm going to be using a range of Distress inks today to do some painting. These are just straight-up traditional Valentine's Day love colors. And I've got my water brush to paint them on. And I'm also going to be using some of my reverse sentiment strips that I designed for Simon Says Stamp. These are great if you struggle with stamping and embossing in white. They are pre-printed, you cut them apart, and you are golden. So I'll be using these for the sentiments on this card project. I've got some Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock. I really love this cardstock because it's really bright white and it's easy to use and that's good enough for me. So let's jump in and start making the card. I've got my Tonic Studios travel mat out and I wanted to show you. It has this little mat that sticks over this glass mixing area, but I like to keep the little mat on because it works well with the distress inks and painting. And my goal here is to paint an area big enough to incorporate the ampersand. I thought I could get two on and then I thought, nah, that's too much math for me. So one big swatch of paint. I'm gonna smush down these colors into the mat and then I'm going to just use the water brush to pick up colors and lay it down in a messy fashion. This is something that's really easy to do and I feel like I go in phases where I forget that you can do this. <laughs> I know that I forget, I forget easy techniques. And this one, my friends, is so simple for creating a simple, quick and colorful background. And the good news is it's kind of hard to mess up. As long as you're working with colors that more or less go together, you know, you're gonna lay them down. They're gonna look fine. The tattered rose was a little light and once I put that down on the paper, I thought, yeah, I don't know if that's gonna work for what I was hoping it would look like. No worries, I'm just gonna keep picking up color with the water brush, laying it down. And of course, with the water brush, if you want your color to be a little softer and a little lighter, you just squeeze out a little water onto the Distress ink that you've smushed down, right? And then you can pick it up and it's a little more watery and a little more transparent, if you will. But I wanted it to be bold, well, not bold, but you know, bright. So laying it down, the colors are great and this is the process. I dried it, and then I came back in and just punched it up a little bit in areas that I wanted to have a bit more color, and that was that. Easy peasy colorful background. Another thing I haven't done in a while is take a few little droplets of water and kind of sprinkle it on and then dab them off, and you know I did this, and I don't know if you can really tell, but I know they're there, and really that's all that matters. I'm going to set that aside to completely dry and I'm going to take my craft knife and my metal ruler and I'm just going to go ahead and cut apart the sentiments. Now I am highly skilled with a metal ruler and a craft knife because I've been doing this for since the olden days of graphic design and I do go back a ways people. I go back to the 80s when we didn't even have Macintosh computers. So I'm, I'm good at this, but what I'm not good at is using it in small spaces. So I brought out the tonic trimmer to cut as close as I could and get these perfect perpendicular straight cuts. Because when I do this with the ruler, I tend to slip and slide a bit, but the Tim Holtz Tonic Guillotine, mm, it's the greatest discovery of my crafting life. I'm just gonna say it, never knew, never knew. Highly recommend, two thumbs up. Those look great. Now these are printed on white cardstock. So to get rid of that white edge, I'm just gonna take a Copic marker in a dark color, this is T10, and just color them in. And I have a really awkward handhold here, so I don't know if you can tell what I'm doing, but I'm coloring that edge, and it gives the look of just black core cardstock, and that is what we want. At least I think that's what we want. That's what I wanted, so that's what I did. Another thing I wanna show you is the craft pick is the greatest tool ever for things like this. Taking thin foam squares, picking them up, 
and placing them into tiny little spaces. That's like a great extension of your fingers. And I don't usually show that, but I wanted you to know. Now that this is dry, I'm going to run this through my Platinum 6 die cut machine, back and forth a few times actually to get a perfect cut. And there is my beautiful pinky watercolored ampersand. Isn't that pretty? I mean, you could use any colors to do this, but I like the pinks. While the die cut machine is out, I'm gonna cut the shadow layer as well out of a piece of Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock, so it'll be nice and sturdy. And those will line up perfectly. Well, eventually. Now, I thought it would be fun to add some shine to my ampersand, so I grabbed this glitter dust in silver, and I'm gonna spray it off camera because it kind of makes a mess, and once I sprayed it on there, it's hard to see on camera, but it really does add a beautiful shimmer. Another idea that I decided to add for this project was to dry emboss this heart stencil onto some Nina Solar White 80 pound. Now, I like to dry emboss on a lighter weight cardstock, because I think it works a little bit better. But I'm getting my sandwich all lined up on the Spellbinders machine. And look at how pretty this dry emboss pattern is on this paper. Stencils, not just for stenciling. Next, I will prep my card base. And this is going to be top folding, five and a half by four and a quarter, and that is a US A2 size. Pressing that down to give it a nice fold. And I like to tape my card bases closed just because I like them to be flat while I am working on them because if it pops up, mama can't keep things straight. So I'm going to take a little dot runner here and I'm going to run it all over the card base itself because I'm going to add that dry embossed heart pattern to the front of the card. I just think this will look really nice. This is so simple. Use your score buddy to line things up like this quickly. This has been my favorite use of the score buddy, aside from scoring. Just like that, my card panel is ready for the rest of the good stuff. I'm gonna take some liquid glue here and just cover the back of the glittery watercolored ampersand. And once I get a good coating all over that, I'm going to drop it onto the shadow layer. And here's the beauty of the liquid adhesive. I didn't put it down in the right place at all but it gives you a little play time to move things around and wiggle them into place and get a perfect placement on a shadow layer. Just like that. And here, I think you can see the shine a little bit. It picks up in the light, but it's really pretty in person. I've got some thin foam squares on the back of the ampersand, so I'm gonna pop that up right in the center of the dry embossed panel. Kind of eyeball it, make sure it looks straight, and then press that down. And then I'll pop up the hugs and then I will pop up the kisses so both line up right on the ampersand. Super simple, I know, but I kinda, that's kinda my vibe. To finish this card project, I thought a few shiny sequins would look nice at the top and bottom, repeating in a little pattern, and that, my friends, is it. Also, craft pick, again, to the rescue. It's the greatest tool. It's the greatest tool in my toolbox. And that's my finished card project. You've got the dry embossing, you've got a colorful ampersand, and hopefully my recipient will appreciate the hugs and kisses I am sending. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.